This show is made possible by support from Landsharks.ca. Visit them for all your coin and swag needs at www.landsharks.ca. And by viewers like you. Thank you for your donations. So what do you do when the winds are howling and the snow is a flying? Easy. You go and play in your studio and do some armchair caching on this episode of Ice and Rise Geocaching Video Zine. Hi there, and welcome to Ice and Rye's Geocaching Video Scene. I'm Ice and Rye, thanks for watching. If you're new to the show, welcome to the family. What this is is me, my co-host Roxy, and Abel, who's behind the camera. We go out caching, film it, throw it together a few hints, tips, and tricks, upload it to the internet so you can download and watch it to your own leisure. If you're a regular viewer, thanks for sticking around. I appreciate your viewership. My website is www.iceandrye.com and my email address, if you'd like to get a hold of me, is geoiceandrye at iceandrye.com. So, what's new? Well, the big news is, say hello to my new studio. Actually, it's my basement, but I was just goofing around, set up some lights, trying this out. Let me know what you think. If you like it, geoiceandrye at iceandrye.com. If you don't like it, geoiceandrye at iceandrye.com. Also, last week I met up with Lower Mainland Cashier, coast to coast to coast, who was in town for a quick visit and we met up at a local donor shop, swapped a couple stories, introduced them to the Prince George caching scene and filled me in on some of the going on in the Lower Mainland and the Vancouver area. Coast to coast, it was great seeing you and hope you continue to enjoy the show. So what's up Rox? I think she smells some cookie somewhere so I'm going to let her go now and we're going to end this chatter segment. Let's get in to some geocaching news. In more local news, recently here in Prince George, the British Columbia Geocachers Association, along with the Prince George Cachers Association, hosted Geocaching 101, an introduction event, the brand new geocachers, and a midwinter get together for the rest of us old timers. We had it here at a local Chinese restaurant, had a fairly decent turnout, lots of prizes for everybody, and it was a whole lot of fun. It was really good to see some of the Prince George cashers dig themselves out of our snow banks and get together for this one great event. So while we were at the Geocaching 101 event, myself, Stormcloud, Plumbrook Acres, and Austin's dad started planning on the WWFM version 3 coming up on May 10th, 2008. 10 o'clock our time, check your local listings for your time. So guys, just to let you know that we've already started planning. We haven't quite come up with a location yet. However, if I reach into my pocket and lean forward to the camera, you see that we already got the geocaching meal all set up. As a matter of fact, I think I'm just going to have myself a little appetizer here. So. Yeah, so planning's coming along great. We sort of got our committee. We got a rough idea who's going to be doing what. Mm. Really good meal too. So May 10th, set it on your calendar. Mm, really good. WWFM take three. Mmm. That's good. I think I'll have another. So here in Canada, we have two brand new geocaching podcasts. Both are Eastern based, one in the province of Ontario and one in the province of Quebec. The Ontario podcast is called the Ontario Geocaching Podcast. And it's just recently started, sounds good so far. As usual, I have links on my website. As for La Belle Provence, they have the geocachingsagdac.com podcast, available en français. So for those of us Anglophones, well, we're gonna to have to learn to speak French or get a good translator. However, 
podcast seems to be doing fairly well. They're up to about 12 episodes as I tape this. Guys, congratulations. Welcome to our little podcasting family. Speaking of geocaching podcasts, I recently hear from Daryl W4 and Firefly03 on the latest episodes of Cache Maniacs and Caches of the Round Table. As I mentioned in the previous episode, I was a panel member of Caches of the Round Table episode 7, and the episodes now hit the feeds. Matter of fact, got a little message here from Daryl and Firefly. Let's roll it. Have a listen. The start of another month means it's time for another episode of the Caches of the Round Table. This month, Bass Jazz of the Grand State Geocacher Radio, Sonny of the Podcaster Podcast, Ice and Rye of this show, and I sat down for a long discussion on GPS Receiver Envy. We talked about the new features we like, along with some we'd still like to see in future versions of geocaching GPSRs. We discussed some differing views from listeners to our last episode on cache saturation. We don't leave you in the cold for new toys, though, this month, as we talk about our picks for a device which requires no batteries or firmware, one that requires both and a little bit of Java programming skill, a personalized geocoin to play with, and another enlightening tool for your cash back. So head over to thecachersroundtable.com to subscribe or download episode 7 for free. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to figure out where the beans and the water go in my GPSR, because I need an espresso. This week's Cache Maniacs guest is a young cacher from the state of Michigan. We run into her and her parents at a lot of the local events. And we decided that we had to interview Mad Pup when she kept asking every time we saw her if we'd interview her. How could we decline an interview with such an excited guest? So, we worked with her parents to schedule a telephone interview, and, well, I think she was just a little too excited. If you're interested in pre-ordering the coins for the Cashier Maniacs, we'll have a little more information on that, too. So stop by the Cashier Maniacs website at cashmaniacs.com for free downloads and subscriptions. Now, where did that Roxy go? Oh, hey, thanks, Firefly, for this great present. Hmm, Canada Customs must have gone through it. It's in a plastic bag now. Oh, well, what do we got? Cookies! Hey! Something for Roxy. There you go, girl. So, thanks for this uh, lovely prize. Now, speaking of prizes, it's time to give away some prizes. It's time for the iTunes Comment Giveaway Contest. Okay, have another one. Time for the iTunes Comment Giveaway Contest. You know how it goes. Go to iTunes, look up the video zine, leave a comment. I throw all the names into this little bucket here, draw one out, and get a prize. This episode, we got a special prize. We have three coins for you in this episode. We have a Plumbrook Acres coin, and we have a pair of coins courtesy of Landsharks.ca. We have the Canadian Micro Puck and a Canadian Micro Coin. Landsharks.ca. Visit them for all your geo coin and geo swag needs. All right. So we have all our names in here. Let's really mix them up. I'm getting multiple names here. Here we go. This episode's coin goes to Club Mud. Congratulations, you've won three GeoCoins. Email me with your snail mail, snail mail address, geoicenride, icenride.com. Make sure you get to me by February 23rd. We'll get these suckers in the mail to you. Congratulations. Again, if you want to enter the contest, go to iTunes, look up the show, leave a comment. It's that simple. And I check all countries, so it doesn't matter which story you use, I'll track down your comments. So that about wraps up the preliminaries. Let's get on with the main event. So sometimes you just can't get out caching. The weather's too bad. I mean, today we have strong winds, a wind chill warning. Person could dress up, but it's dangerous. And besides, this time of the year, all the caches are under three feet of snow. So what's a person to do? Well, believe it or not, there are still armchair caches out there that only require you to do a little bit of thinking and a little bit of looking around. And in this episode, I'm gonna show you a couple and they're tons of fun. You can do them at home with the kids, have friends over, make it a party. Ladies and gentlemen, a little bit of armchair caching. So we're in the Ice and Rice studio and we're doing a little bit of caching today. What, you're not going outside? Well, if you look down here at this, as of this recording, it's minus 22 with a nasty little weather warning. 
blizzard warning and a heavy snowfall warning and they're talking about instant frostbite so now might be a good time to do some armchair caching what's armchair caching you ask well it's caching without actually having to go somewhere now the purists out there may not exactly enjoy it because it doesn't get you outside and using a handheld gps but it does involve some other things a lot of puzzle work a little bit of translation and some good old-fashioned photoshop techniques so where do you go to find these caches well there are various bookmarks out there and the one i'm going to be using is called armchair caches by haggis hunter now if you look distance from my coordinates most of these are actually in germany so one service you may require is a translator now one i prefer is the fable fish translator and of course i'll have links to this on the website so some of these caches go from incredibly simple to very puzzling difficult type caches so the first cache we're going to look at is called four windows and this one's fairly simple it's a house with a window in each of the four sides each window looks south where's the house pretty simple you can take your message either email this guy or text message it to him and he'll get back to you and whether you can claim a smiley face or not next we go to one that's a bit more complicated it's called go trabby go now this what this cache does is it takes you to Dresden in a series of webcams. Now we're going to click on this and bring up their webcams. And as you can see, most of the city's covered. Now, however, with the time shift, as I record this, it's, well, let's find out what time it is. So let's click on this one here at random. It's 2100 hours on this particular date. So it's dark outside. But what the object of this cache is, is to find a trabby. Want to know what a trabby is? Well, it's real quick. We'll just backtrack here a bit to the actual cache page. And if we click down to here, that's what you're looking for. So once you do find a car, you can simply right click, save image as, save it on your computer somewhere, upload it to the website, and claim a find. So the next one we're going to look at, it's one you've seen before. I did this way back when in a microzine. It's called Exo Area 52. And this cache is still around. This is, again, one of the easier ones. Go to a webcam site. Get a current picture. Save it. Do a little bit of Photoshop with some aliens. Upload it. Claim a smiley. So from going looking for aliens, we're going to go look for something slightly different. This cache is of particular interest to me. It's called USO. It gives you the coordinates. You see your little Yahoo image over here. And it's nice that the English it has English instructions. So as it says, the coordinates are real. And you can actually find something there. How long it will be there? It's unknown. But what's there? So it's up to you to go out onto the net. Do a little research. Maybe use Google Earth. I don't know. I've actually been working on this cache. And haven't come up with anything yet. So if anybody has any hints or tips out there, just email me, geoicenri, icenri.com. So what else is there? Well, there's this lovely one I was working on earlier. It's called Beton Cache. And translated means concrete cache. Now this one's only in German, so you'll have to use the translation service. But what it is, is a location of this concrete tower. And you have to email the owner with a bunch of data on the actual tower when was it built who built it how much concrete is used in it and it's a really fun little cache you can actually take the coordinates punch it into google earth and it'll take you right to the site where you can actually see pictures of the tower but finding out the information is proving to be a bit more difficult so next we look at what is called heart nuts which translates into hard nut now this one is difficult it involves a little bit of math. We'll actually scroll down here to the English instructions. And I don't know how good some of you are in math word problems. I used to love doing them in high school. And fortunately, it's been so long since I've been out of high school, I've gotten, well, not that good at doing math problems. So this one, I'm going to sit down with a latte some night and start doing some math and see what I can come up with. But it looks like it could be a really, really fun cache. So there you go, just a couple of uh, armchair caches. And again, I'll have links to the bookmark list on my website at icenride.com. Go there and check them out. And uh, you should have a lot of fun. There's a lot of really great caches out there that uh, 
don't actually require you to go outside and freeze your butt off in a snowstorm. So armchair caching, just something else you can do when you can't quite get outside to do some geocaching. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Just before we go, a couple of quick notes. First off, thank you to LandSharks.ca for their wonderful contributions to their show. LandSharks.ca, for all your geo coins and geo swag needs, visit them at www.LandSharks.ca. So as I've mentioned before, this show does take a little bit of money to produce. And if you get any kind of enjoyment out of it whatsoever, I would appreciate if you could donate to the video zine. You can go to my webpage, www.icenri.com, and I have some PayPal buttons set up right on the front to make it quick and easy to donate to the video zine. And to those of you who've already donated, thank you very much for your contributions. I do appreciate it. But in the meantime, and in between time, that's it. Another episode of Ice and Rise Geocaching Video Zine. So until the next episode, cash on. Hey, Roxy. Want some more cookies? Want some more cookies? Oh, cookies. Oh, cookies. Yeah, we like cookies, don't we? There you go. One for you. Oh, hold on. There. There you go. Mmm. Mmm. Not bad. Mmm. A little bland tasting. Hey, Bob. Oh, right. He's working the camera. Okay, he can't have a cookie. He's working. Here you go.